always know just what to do. Two long ears and button eyes and just my size. Miffy, Miffy, oh so true, me do love you. Miffy at the seaside. Lived close to the sea. One morning, Mr. Rabbit took Miffy to the beach. Miffy got up very early. She put on her striped beach dress. Look at me, she said. I'm going to the seaside. Get your bucket and spade and jump into the cart," said Mr. Rabbit. "I will give you a ride." The cart bumped along over the grass and sand. See the sea. Gaily striped tents stood on the beach. Mr. Rabbit stopped at a red and white one. Out you get," said Mr. Rabbit. Miffy ran inside the tent. She put on her red trunks all by herself. Miffy worked hard with her bucket and spade. She built a sand castle with towers and a moat. Then she made a mountain of sand. She made it higher and higher. She filled her bucket with colored shells. She found them on the beach and in rocky pools. But best of all, Miffy liked the sea. She splashed and paddled. How cold the water was! Time to come in," called Mr. Rabbit. Then Miffy ran round and round till she was dry. She didn't want to go home. Mr. Rabbit pushed the cart, bump, bump, over the grass. Soon she was fast asleep. One bright day, the doorbell at Miffy's house rang. Grandpa and Grandma Bunny had come to visit. Hello, Miffy," said Grandma Bunny. 
we thought we would come and visit you in your house. But as it is such a lovely warm day, we thought we could take you to the beach instead. Oh, how wonderful! shouted Miffy. I would love to show you the beach. What a nice idea, said Mother Bunny. I will pack you a nice lunch so you can have a picnic. And you can tell Miffy what the beach was like when you were young. Father Bunny said, I will drive you to the beach in our car. So off they went in Father Bunny's car. When they arrived, Grandpa Bunny said, When we were young, we used to make castles in the sand. Perhaps we can make some more today. Yes, said Father Bunny. I remember making sand castles too. We can all make some together. I did it too, said Grandma Bunny. I remember that the sand had to be wet. So Miffy picked up her bucket and went down close to the water. She filled the bucket with wet sand and brought it up to where the others were sitting. Miffy had to do it many times because it took a lot of sand to make a proper castle. How beautiful it was! And just as the castle was finished, along came Melanie, Miffy's bunny friend. Would you like to play ball with me, Miffy? asked Melanie. Oh, yes, said Miffy. Don't go too far, said Father Bunny. You might get lost. We won't get lost, Father, said Miffy, because we know that you will be where the sandcastle is. So Miffy and Melanie ran off, kicking the ball along the beach. Soon, they were quite far away. Meanwhile, the water was slowly rising up the beach. Oh dear, said Grandma Bunny. The water is coming very close to our sandcastle. We'd better move back a bit. And sure enough, the water soon came up and washed away the whole castle. Miffy and Melanie were tired and they started to go back. Where is your family, Miffy? asked Melanie. I can't see them. Don't worry, Melanie, said Miffy. They are right by our sandcastle. But Miffy looked and looked and she didn't see the sandcastle. She didn't know that the seawater had washed it away. She and Melanie walked and walked along the beach. Where is that castle? said Miffy. Maybe we really are lost, Melanie. Miffy, Melanie, we're here. The sea came up and washed our castle away. It's nice that our houses are not made of sand, said Miffy. They were all very happy to be together again. One morning, Miffy was fast asleep in her bed. She was having a beautiful dream. Suddenly, her mother rushed into her room and said, Miffy, dear, wake up, it's late. You'll be late for school. Miffy quickly sat up 
and looked at her clock. It was very late. Miffy rushed to her wardrobe. What should I wear, Mother? she said. Just wear anything, said Mother Bunny. You must get dressed very quickly so that you won't be late for school. So Miffy chose her yellow dress. Come and have your breakfast, Miffy, called her mother. I have carrots and tomatoes all ready for you. But when Miffy came into the kitchen, her mother was surprised. Miffy, she said, you have a big spot on your dress. Oh dear, said Miffy, if I have to change my clothes, I'll be later than ever. But you must, said her mother. You should wear clean clothes to school. When you are rushing, everything goes wrong. So Miffy changed into a clean dress. Now I must really run to school, she said. Hold on, Miffy, called her mother. You have forgotten your lunch bag. Before Miffy got very far, she remembered that she had promised her teacher a nice red apple from the tree in her garden. She knew she would be later still, but she ran back home to get the apple. But Miffy could not reach the apple in the tree. Mother! she called. Could you please come and pick an apple from the tree for me? I promised to bring one to my teacher. Oh dear, Miffy, said her mother. You're getting later and later. But she picked the apple for Miffy and off Miffy went again. Miffy ran and ran all the way to school. Oh, I'm so late, she cried. But the door did not open. It was locked. Miffy looked at the playground. It was empty and there were no scooters parked there. Then there was her mother in the car. Miffy, she called. In our rush, we completely forgot that today is a school holiday. You're not late. There is no school today. Miffy laughed and laughed. You see, Miffy, Mother said, when you are rushing, everything goes wrong. But not everything, said Miffy. Now I have a delicious apple to eat. And tomorrow, I'll pick a fresh one for the teacher. Miffy rode home with her mother and enjoyed the rest of her school holiday. One sunny afternoon, Miffy was at the beach with her father. She had been swimming in the sea. She came out of the water and dried herself with her pretty blue towel. Now she wanted to sit down in the sun and read her book. You must be careful of the hot sun, said Father Bunny. If you want to read, then you should lie in the shade. So Miffy 
Sophie found a shady place next to a colourful tent. She read a few pages of her book, but then the owners of the tent folded up the tent and left the beach. thought Miffy. Now I must find another shady place. I know, said Father Bunny. We have a beach umbrella in our car. I will get it. He put the beach umbrella in the sand. Once again, Miffy could sit down in the shade. But after she had read just a few pages, the umbrella suddenly snapped shut. Father Bunny tried very hard to open it again. I forgot to mend the umbrella, Miffy, Father Bunny said. Just then, a large cloud floated across the sky and blocked the sun. Miffy laughed. Now the whole beach is in the shade, she said. But soon the cloud drifted away and Miffy was in the hot sun again. There was nothing else to do but cover herself with her pretty blue towel but there was a strong breeze and the towel blew away. said Miffy. She didn't know what to do next. By this time, the sun was going down. Now there is no problem, Father, said Miffy. It will soon get dark. Yes, said Father Bunny. The hot sun is going down, but that also means that it's time to go home. Miffy was sorry that she had to go home, but she laughed at how difficult it was to stay out of the sun at the beach. She climbed into her father's car, and as he drove them home, she fell fast asleep and dreamt of the bright yellow sun. She liked to sail on it, and she liked to sit on a beach and watch the sea. She could play with her ball, build a sandcastle, and fly her kite. One day, Miffy's mother asked Miffy where she would like to have a summer picnic. By the sea! Miffy answered. What a nice idea, said Mother Bunny. We'll have our picnic at the beach. We can spread a large blanket on the sand and put up our special beach umbrella 
so that we won't get sunburnt, she said. Yes, said Miffy. And I hope my friends will be there too, so we can all play together. On the day of the picnic, it was sunny and warm. A perfect blue sky day. Miffy's mother prepared a lovely salad of carrots and cabbage and green and red peppers. It looked so delicious. She also made two bottles of carrot and parsley juice. Miffy's father said, I will get the car ready and you can put everything in the boot. When they arrived, they saw that Boris and Barbara Bear were also at the beach. And look, Auntie Alice and Aggie were there too. Boris and Barbara had a basket full of freshly picked blueberries from the woods. Auntie Alice had a large box of her home-baked biscuits and chocolate cake. She said, why don't we join our picnics together? What a Good idea, said Father Bunny. Let's spread this blanket out for all that wonderful food. How good it tasted. They ate everything. When they had finished, Auntie Alice said, before we play a game, let's all sing a happy summer song. Aggie began to play her accordion. As she played, the sound of the waves grew louder. So Aggie began to play louder as well. And while everyone was singing and Aggie was playing, no one noticed that the sea was coming closer and closer. First, the waves caught Miffy's bucket. It floated away. And then, before anyone realised, the sea had reached the towels. Oh dear, shouted Mother Bunny in surprise. Everything will get wet. Auntie Alice quickly moved the towels away from the water. I'm glad we finished all our food said Mother Bunny. Everyone laughed. We still had a wonderful picnic, said Miffy. Now, let's play. beautiful day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and the flowers were in bloom. Miffy thought, this is going to be a nice day. Mother, said Miffy, it's such a lovely day. May I visit Poppy Pig? Yes, Miffy, but it's a long way and your scooter is broken. You'll have to walk. It was a long walk and Miffy was happy when she reached Poppy's house at last. She knew that Poppy always had some nice biscuits to eat. When she knocked on the door, she could almost taste those biscuits. 
but there was no answer, and she looked up and saw a note stuck at the door. Miffy read the note. I'm off to visit my cousin, back next week, it said. Oh well, thought Miffy, what else can I do on this lovely day? She walked all the way back home. I think I'll call Melanie, she said. Miffy went to the telephone and dialed Melanie's number. Melanie's mother answered the phone. Can Melanie come out and play with me? asked Miffy. Oh, I'm sorry, Miffy dear, said Melanie's mother. Melanie is in bed with a cold and cannot go outside to play today. I know, thought Miffy. I'll get my ball and go and play with Snuffy. So Miffy went to her cupboard and took out her big brightly coloured ball. Snuffy loves to chase this ball, said Miffy. She ran as fast as she could to where Snuffy lived. We will have great fun, she thought. But when she got there, Snuffy was lying beside her empty food dish, fast asleep. Miffy could see that Snuffy had just had her dinner. Miffy bounced her ball up and down, up and down. But Snuffy only opened one eye, just a little bit, and then closed it again, and stayed fast asleep. So poor Miffy had to go home again, still with no one to play with on such a beautiful day. I'll just have to play by myself, she thought, but I can still have fun. I'll go and fly my kite. She took out her beautiful kite with the long ribbons. She held onto the string and ran across the meadow. She ran and ran, but the kite just bounced along the ground. There was no wind, no wind at all, and the kite could not fly up into the air. Miffy stopped running. This started off as such a nice day, she thought, but everything went wrong. I think I'll just go home. At home, Miffy took one of her favourite books from her shelf. Here is something that never goes wrong, she said. A good book. Miffy smiled as she read the funny story. What fun, she thought. It wasn't such a bad day after all.